At the Weight Management Center, we recognize that severe obesity is a disease, a disease that deserves the best efforts of the medical profession to find effective treatments. Many health problems caused by obesity, known as comorbidities, are the reason that obesity must be addressed in an effective manner. Thousands of diet and exercise plans have been developed over the years, but none have been shown to be reliably effective in the treatment of severe obesity. On the other hand, weight loss surgery, also known as bariatric surgery, has been demonstrated to be effective in the treatment of severe obesity. It also has been shown to be effective in the treatment of the comorbidities of obesity. At the Weight Management Center, we've seen surgical patients resolve their diabetes, their sleep apnea, their high blood pressure, and the list goes on and on. We're not the only ones seeing these remarkable outcomes. A large study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2004 showed that bariatric surgery resolves diabetes 77% of the time. Hyperlipidemia, or high cholesterol, is improved in 70%. High blood pressure is resolved or cured in about two-thirds of people. Obstructive sleep apnea is resolved in over 85% of those having bariatric operations. This study and many others prove that bariatric surgery is really about regaining one's health, not just about losing pounds. We also know that bariatric surgery is very effective in preventing the health problems so commonly seen with severe obesity. We believe that severe obesity should be managed effectively early on, even before complications set in, just as high blood pressure should be treated before complications set in. This is not to say that diet and exercise should not be tried first. They should. Weight loss surgery is a very powerful tool to help a person lose excess body fat. However, the surgery must be considered just that, a tool, if a person hopes to get the excellent results we have come to expect. Diet and exercise remain very important, and that is why we have a great support staff in our clinic to help you with those aspects of your program. Of course, bariatric surgery is not for every obese person. Guidelines were established in 1991 by the National Institutes of Health. They concluded that surgical therapy may be offered to morbidly obese patients who are unresponsive to non-surgical therapy for weight loss. At that time, the NIH also defined morbid obesity or severe obesity as having a body mass index of 40 or more. Also included in the definition of morbid obesity are people with a body mass index of 35 to 40 when a major obesity-related health problem exists. Special consideration is usually given to those with type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, or obstructive sleep apnea. If you know your height and weight, you can easily find your body mass index, or BMI, by using the BMI calculator on this website. You can even search for BMI on Google and find a BMI calculator there. An example of a person with a BMI of 40 would be someone standing at 5 foot 6 inches and weighing 247 pounds. Virtually every insurance company and every bariatric surgery center in the United States follows these guidelines. If you are unsure whether you qualify, please call our office and one of our staff will be able to help you. First, let me say that all three of the operations are done laparoscopically, which means that very small incisions are used. Dr. Prickett and Dr. Tribble were the first surgeons in the Midlands, and possibly the entire state, to offer laparoscopic weight loss surgery. Between them and Dr. Kalani, they have performed thousands of laparoscopic weight loss operations. Their experience with these procedures is enhanced by the fact that they have generally assisted one another with these operations. The three operations are laparoscopic Ruin Y gastric bypass, sometimes simply called gastric bypass, laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, which involves removing a substantial portion of the stomach, and finally, laparoscopic adjustable gastric band, also known as realized band or lap band. In the following segments of this webinar, we will address each operation in some detail. Generally speaking, the gastric bypass is more reliably effective than the sleeve gastrectomy, and the sleeve gastrectomy is more reliably effective than the realize or lap band. On the other hand, the risk of complications is just the opposite, with the bands being the safer operation and with the gastric bypass carrying somewhat more risk. On the whole though, I think that the laparoscopic gastric bypass is the best choice for most of our patients when you consider both effectiveness and risk. 
However, the sleeve gastrectomy and the band will be the best approach for some patients. We will ask you to take a short multiple choice test before moving on to the segments about the three operations. Please watch this segment and the other segments as often as you wish to find the answers on the test. The tests are simply a tool for us to determine if your understanding is good. We will also use the tests during the clinic visit to clarify any points of confusion or misunderstanding.